On to our Health Watch, where we discuss all of the topics that are trending in the medical world with Dr. Saeed Hussein from Trinity Health of New England. Good to see you again, sir. Likewise. Tim. Glad to have you here. Uh, for the first time ever, a professional female athlete has been diagnosed with chronic traumatic encephalopathy, CTE, something we're seeing a lot with men, but this is the first time we've seen it in a woman. It was a late Australian rules football player down in Australia. Just curious uh, what, what, what to make of that. Uh, of course, this is a, a brain disease that has been linked to concussive head trauma, also even sub-concussive hits to the head, meaning hits to the head that uh, are not uh, serious enough to necessarily cause a concussion. But it seems like there's a link there. It's just tough to figure out what's what. Yeah, Tim, I think this should serve as a wake-up call as more and more women um, get into contact sports, especially in the younger age group. Um, this is probably not the first time we're going to see something like this. Yeah. So um, there is an association with repeated head injuries that leads to degenerative brain disease. That's what this is. Right. Right. Um, and symptoms can vary from motor symptoms, difficulty walking, or uh, memory loss, um, including uh, behavioral issues that may arise, yeah. including depression. Um, and suicidal tendencies. So all of those need to be noted, but people, the folks that are in charge of these contact sports, of these leagues, we need to, we need to have a discussion, a dialogue in terms of what we can do to protect athletes. Right, that's just something we know, even while we're still trying to figure out that link. All right, uh, a lot of talk about aspartame, the artificial sweetener, because it looks like the World Health Organization is getting ready to call it a possible cancer-causing agent, carcinogen. I feel like with similar stories in the past, the devil's in the details here. Uh, do we know how much you, aspartame you would have to ingest on a daily or weekly basis to be at risk for more uh, for, for cancer? Yeah, so there's a lot of debate going on in the medical community about this. There are two committees uh, working under the WHO that are set to release their recommendations very soon, uh, Tim, and those are expected by July 14th, mm -hmm. including what evidence they are citing. So what studies and what, what does the data show? So I I'd be interested in looking at that because, as you may know, the FDA still says this is a safe uh, yeah. uh, additive, food additive to be used. It's been studied extensively. Whether there is a question mark, folks should know that before they, you know, pick up a Coke Zero or a Pepsi, uh, Diet Pepsi, uh, because this is a really common additive that is used yes. in drinks and other substances. Yeah, I, I know, I, at least going back to, I think, 1981, the old research was that a, about a 130-pound person would need to drink somewhere between one and three 12-packs of soda a day. Not really a realistic amount, but curious to see, like you said, maybe that recommendation has changed. Uh, uh, let's talk about the air quality. Uh, we've had these hazardous levels here before. We're seeing them out in the Midwest. Just just what kind of effects do they have on the average person? And is that another area where we talk about it being hazardous, but you'd have to really be outside trying to run a marathon before you start seeing problems? What do we know? So the issue here with this uh, wildfire-related air pollution that we're seeing in the Northeast and the Midwest, Tim, is likely to get worse hmm. as climate change you know, takes its own toll on how our summers go and, and just wildfires in general. So yes, it can have an impact on people because of the small particulate matter that is actually not even visible to the human eye um, that can accumulate and cause heart issues, lung issues, including uh, irritation to the ears, eyes, uh, nose, yeah. throat. So it's, it's important that if you do have an underlying condition that you take precautions, including wearing a mask, limiting outdoor activity if possible, yeah. but the same applies to those individuals that may not have any underlying uh, issues. Yeah, well, I, I don't have any known breathing issues, but when it was really bad here in Connecticut, I was outside mowing the lawn for even an hour and came back and noticed a tickle in the throat, one that I would normally attribute to seasonal allergies, but it wasn't that time of year, and I'm thinking, yeah, that probably right. was a wildfire smoke, wasn't right. it? Right, absolutely. All right, well, doctor, thank you so much for taking the time to join us to give us thank some you. expertise. We always appreciate it. Dr. Saeed Hussein from Trinity Health of New England.